and I'd like to welcome to the stage your co-writer and co-director of the film, Micah Hearn. Thank you. So, Mike, obviously you're, I said you're one half of the team. Do you want to talk about the, <laughs> the, the other person who's also part of the team, just so we can give him the credit? So, if you want to, I mean, uh, yeah, you can I can, I can talk about him. I can talk about him. <laughs> uh, he's also uh, about the same height as me, similar, kind of a bit skinnier, big nose as well, a little bit more bald. So, if and you just imagine that, stood next to Mike. <laughs> uh, his name is Enda Lockman. And, uh, yeah, we've been working together on um, making stuff since we were in art school together, really, for about 20 years now. Now, I can imagine that writing together must be you know, really, really good and productive, cause it's good, especially with comedy, to have something to bounce off. Yeah. Um, when you're directing together, do you do everything together? Is it like one of you takes care of the camera, one of you takes care of the actors? Is it sort of intuitive how you work together? It's pretty 50-50, because we don't really know any different. We've never done it on our own, so we've always done everything together. So uh, for us, it's sort of, yeah, we kind of have all our fights before we get to set. Um, and then we kind of, you know, most of the stuff hopefully... Like for with a film like this, we had a very short time to make it, so we had like a lot of our as many decisions as you can make before you get there made, and then it's just the little stuff that you're trying to work out or the stuff that crops up in the day. And you got you got a fantastic cast in the film, and uh, Maeve Higgins is brilliant as the as, as the lead Rose. Um, did you write with her in mind? Yeah, so Rose or Maeve Higgins is a, an Irish stand-up comedian, um, and she's just an amazing uh, writer and she does podcasting and all this different stuff, but she hadn't really been in the movie before. And we'd worked with her, uh, she'd made a TV show in Ireland before, kind of uh, a hybrid uh, cooking and stand-up TV show. It was really great, called Fancy Vittles. And we had done the titles for that show, and we kind of met her through that a few years ago, and just always loved, we're a big fan of hers. So when we came up with the idea for the movie, we were like, uh, let's kind of write it with, like even before we wrote a word, we were kind of, let's ask Maeve if she'd be interested in being this character. Um, so then we had, we kind of had a voice in our head for what what Rose was like, kind of based on some of the stuff we've seen Maeve do in her stand up, um, and that's kind of where we evolved the character out. And with it, with the, you've got a great cast throughout. I mean, uh, Barry Ward is Martin Martin's great as well. How did you come across him? Was he something you actually had in mind, or was that auditioning? Or? No, Barry. Yeah, Barry. We had like a list of people for Martin, and Barry was like one that came up. And I t I had I had just watched uh, Do you know End of the Fucking World that show that was on last year. And Barry's been in like Ken Loach movies and, and stuff. Um, he's he's quite well known in Ireland, especially. But uh, he had played kind of a slightly comedic role in that. And then I thought, oh, Barry would be great for this. And we sent him the script. And I don't think he even read it. He just said no straight away. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, uh, we kind of badgered him a bit more. Um, and then eventually he read it and like really enjoyed it. And uh, we, we met with him and he did, we just got on really well. And we kind of knew people in common and everything. It was just like one of those meetings where we had lunch and... We had a chat with him and he was like into it. Um, and then he just, you know, we were nervous too because when, when it's your first film, you often just have to give the part to the actor. You can't like see loads of people, if, especially if they're kind of well known. Um, but Barry was really sound and he just uh, like did loads of little videos because there's so many kind of small characters that he had to play, obviously like the wife and uh, Bonnie and all those people. So we, and Barry started like just sending us little videos of these different characters, um, and we had like a very clear idea of who we wanted them to be because they were kind of based on people we knew. So, <laughs> so, uh, but he was great, and uh, yeah, it worked out well. And with Will Forte, was he somebody you, you, you had in mind uh, early on? And was that a process of like, you don't, you know, you just have to offer it to him and, and hope that he accepts? And... Yeah, it was one of those things, again, we had a list, like we've been, we started working on this in 2014, so you have everybody, I, like we had David Bowie on that list at one point, that's how long ago we started on this. But um, it was like, oh, you know, there's, there was this tax uh, law in Ireland where um, there, it was an artist exemption law, so if you moved to Ireland, um, and especially in the 80s and 90s, you could live tax-free if you were an artist. So most, like, one hit wonder like Chris Berg. I'm not saying films based on Chris Berg, but uh, that might be a hint. <laughs> so, it's not saying it's not. Who Chris Berg might be like, but uh, in our heads. Um, but uh, anyway, we sent it to. We got to through to Will's agent, and we sent it to Will. And uh, Will had been to Ireland a couple of times, and he kind of just went. I don't know why, but he read it, and uh, and he really liked it. And then we had a Skype with him, and we got on well with him. And he kind of like for Will, who comes from like really great comedy background obviously like with SNL and the last man on earth I don't know if you've seen the show but it's great um, he had sort of was just really interested to see if we had, if we were the same people who had written it were going to direct it and that's all he really cared about because he wanted the jokes to kind of come through that process um, and then once that was gone he was happy
And when you're working with people like Maeve and, and Will, or who come from a comedy background and a kind of improvisational or writing background, do you make an opportunity for them to, to, to use that, or you know, you, either in the writing or in the development or on set, is yeah. there a chance for them to do that? We were very happy to do that, but it didn't happen uh, as much as we thought it would. Uh, like we had the script was very tight and it's very close to what you see on screen, but uh, we also didn't have a lot of time. Um, on set to be like, going, okay, let's do five takes where it's just do whatever you want. We didn't really have that time. So, but going in, like Maeve obviously made it her own. So a lot of it was just going, Maeve, uh, this is what we've written. What, how would you say that better or in your own voice a bit more? So there's a bit of that going on. And then Will was the opposite. He was like, I don't want to change a word of this. But every now and then, if he had an idea, he'd, like, he had this kind of, I guess it maybe it's from SNL training or something. He would say, do you mind if I pitch you something? Really, he's the most polite man in the world. He's like, he's almost like Ned Flanders or something. He's just really, <laughs> he's just really lovely. So he'd come to you and go, uh, uh, "Do you mind if I pitch you something?" And we're like, uh, "Yeah, well, whatever you want to do, like, we do it." And uh, yeah, and he'd just like, "Oh, well, what if I try this?" And we're like, "Yeah, let's go for one of those." And I think that there's stuff like that we hadn't written in, like the way he does the incantations in the film is so stupid and brilliant. Um, that we like the first time he did that, like we hadn't even spoken about that. It just said kind of he does an incantation, and he was like, "Will was like, oh, I'll just say something here, like yeah, cool." And then <laughs> the first one was the one where he, the first time we did it was the time he was dropping the stick, and he just started going <laughs> did all that crazy backwards kind of six 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 stuff, and we were like, me and Andrew were just like almost crying with happiness. So uh, that's exactly what we kind of were, well, not what we were imagining, but better than we imagined. I was going to ask you. Uh, if Christian Winter was uh, inspired by a particular person, but I think we've already covered that. Yeah, sure. But um, <laughs> where did the song come from? Was the song in the script? Did you? Did you? Who wrote the song? And because it's it, it's an amazing uh, cosmic woman uh, sitting in my head now. I wrote I wrote the song with, my, with George, the composer, and uh, us. I wrote the song together. Um, and we actually have a full. You can listen to it on SoundCloud somewhere if you Google it. But we made we made the full track like a four minute track. Um, but I, I I wrote it basically and sang it into my phone. And then George, who's like the composer of the movie, is just an amazing musician, so he wrote kind of a click track for it, and then we only had Will for a certain amount of days, so Will sang it on set, and the whole thing, like in the bedroom one day, just on a wild track, and then we used that, and George went back into a studio and recorded it with a band and everything, and made a full track out of it, so it sort of is a big collaboration, really. Um, but the stupidity of it was just a, a, voice, a voice message at like four in the morning, isn't it? But people yeah. can go and listen to that full yeah, track. Yeah, there's a SoundCloud. If you, if you, Christian Winter, the character, has a SoundCloud that, uh, that the distributors made up for him, so you can go and Google it and see if, see if you can find it. Um, was, what was the initial inspiration for, for Extraordinary? Where did it come from in terms of...? Well, we were, we were we had a couple of things. We were, writing, we were trying to write something that we wanted to make, and it was a bit genre and funny. And we also kind of were trying to think of something that was low budget enough to get made for our first movie, which is not really exactly what happened. But um, so we were thinking about like tiny hauntings and stuff. And then I I stumbled upon this this uh, uh, clickbait, one of those kind of articles that you know, and it said ghost is ghost coming to grope grannies or something like that. and it was basically the, the, I'm sorry this, is, this goes somewhere I promise and then the, it got there was a it was clickbait so I obviously clicked on it and it said it said uh, it was like about this old folks home in Kent or somewhere and it was uh, uh, a ghost or a poltergeist was coming in the night and touching up these old ladies right and like, which I which wasn't very funny but in in the in the article in the article there was this amazing thing and it just described the ghost hunters and it was just two or three lines about this couple and they came um, and they were just basically a local couple and he was like a lorry driver and she worked in the credit union and then at night they would go and try and help people with their haunted buildings or whatever and I was just like that sounds amazing um, I wonder how like how did they meet and so me and Anna just started talking about it like how did they meet how did they realize they had this gift that could get rid of ghosts and you know what was the love story that got them together and I guess that's kind of what ended up in the movie did you have um, discussions about what the most ridiculous thing to be haunted could be? <laughs> yeah, um, I think we were just trying to like keep it as boring as possible. That was our uh, mantra for when we were writing it. And like, you know, if it got too fancy or too exciting, we were trying to get rid of it. <laughs> but uh, like the, the one of the things we were doing was we were, when we were thinking about the script at the start was like when you you know if you Google hauntings on or YouTube hauntings, they're always like a really terrible thing, like a chair just falling over or. or a locker door in, a, in an American high school closing and that's like a really haunted or something like that and they're never like a big demon you know like they are in the rest of the movies so we were like let's make a movie about these tiny crappy hauntings so uh, that was kind of where the you know the fun part of it was that and when I, 
I'd like to talk a little bit about the effects because uh, the, there's great effects in there, but I, and obviously you're talking about working on a budget. So when you were writing the script, were you, I know you come from a design and both of you come from a design animation background. When you were writing the script, were you thinking, we know how to do this effect, so we'll write it in? Or was it a case that we'll write it in and figure out how to do it? No, you're right. It was, we kind of knew what we were doing. Um, we, we make TV commercials and stuff like that as well, so we've done a lot of the stuff, but a lot of the, the stuff we enjoyed the most of all was the stuff you do in camera and maybe like getting rid of a wire here and there. And in the film, I think we probably got rid, rid of two miles of cat gut, like there's strings everywhere. Like if you know the bit where they're in the, the kitchen and the seance is happening, and in the, I don't know if you can even see it in the movie, but in the background, there's loads of like kitchen cupboards closing and lamps flying around and stuff and like the art department were basically back there like uh, Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone kind of like just with strings <laughs> <laughs> going like that just pulling doors closed and stuff so there's a lot of practical effects even the, the floating virgin um, in the bedroom we actually just built like this kind of magic trick shelf that came out so there's no wires or anything on her she was just like kind of lying there so it was all kind of in camera and that was sort of the kind of look and I guess the era of the movie that we were developed as well that we were trying to ape a little bit I mean, one big visual effect is, is actually at the end, though, which isn't yeah. a practical effect, which no. is the demon. And how much discussion did you have about how to do that? Was that ever thought to do that really practically? Or yeah, the the weird thing about that was uh, like we were we were going, well, we just build a big sheet, or we you know how it was always going to be a sheet ghost since the first version of the script, and like kind of everything was leading to it being a sheet ghost. I was trying to hint at it all the way, and all those sheets flying into the hole, all that sort of stuff. But uh, it actually worked out that the post house that we were doing the effects uh, were really good and they were sort of like a producer on the movie as well. So it was actually cheaper for us to do it as a CGI effect than it was to build a big crappy sheet in a way. And then we were happier as well in a way because it just it just brought something else. Like I guess for us the kind of stupid idea was that you kind of go from this VHS type tape at the start to some kind of crazy Hollywood movie at the end and there was some sort of loop there. Um, and that's kind of how it ended up being with the effects as well. You go from like strings to this big crazy CGI ghost at the end. Brilliant. Well, I'd like to open it up to the audience if we have any questions out there. For, uh, if I, I can't can see anybody. But I think one of the I'm almost frightened to ask this, but what was the ectoplasm made from that Martin <laughs> throws Good up? Good question. Yeah, we, uh, we tried lots of stuff. I think it was like this. Um, kind of sugary water with some gelatin in it, but we had loads of different colours and consistencies that Barry tried, and he was actually a trooper about trying them all and puking loads. But uh, the, I only found out recently that the makeup lady who was doing it, uh, Corrine, actually put loads of whiskey into it each time, so that, <laughs> and now I realise why he was cool about it. So <laughs> Barry likes whiskey. Like. <laughs> Excellent. Anybody else? Any other questions out there? Yep, just one of the sorry. I've noticed in the end credits there are a lot of, um, well, the effects house was in Belgium. Yeah. Um, it was sort of co funded in Belgium. Um, how did that come about? Was that, um, did you have to go for the financing or? Yeah, it was part of the financing. So the, the way it was structured was that the, this place called U Media in Belgium, they're basically one of the producers on the movie, but they're part of the pot that they put into the budget is actually the effects. So instead of giving you money, they give you the effects. That you need for the movie, so they were one of the main producers, and that's how that worked. So, and they were we were really delighted. They were amazing. And they did a really good job. Really? Anybody else? Yep, just wanted to know. Do you believe in ghosts? Uh, <laughs> good question. Uh, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't think. I only don't believe in ghosts because I haven't experienced a ghost myself. Um, but I've heard I've heard a lot of amazing stories. Some of which are in the movie. Um, about different tiny hauntings and big hauntings, and those people I believe, but I don't know if I can say it, say it till I've seen it myself. Who, who was the person amongst the cast who was most likely to believe in ghosts? Was there anybody who was just like, no, this is... Well, the actual castle that we filmed in, in Charleville, in the middle of Ireland, we were there for like t almost 10 days, um, had, had people living in it, and they were like kind of mining the castle, and apparently it's haunted by the ghost of a six-year-old girl who fell down the stairs, and they were pretty adamant about that. They heard her singing and whistling and all this different stuff. But I would say, uh, May, well, I don't think Will or May really believe in ghosts, but Terry Chandler, who plays Sailor, is definitely very uh, scary cat. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Anybody else? Anybody else out there? I can't see. Oh, just over there, yeah. How did you get Sarah to move during the car chase scene? Oh, that's a good, good question, actually. Um, so, one of the funny 
but not funny now, but not, not at all funny during the shoot things, was, uh, we, you know, when we cast the film, um, obviously we had Mayo in it from the start, and Claudia, the other Australian lady, uh, we knew as well, and we kind of wrote her part for her. Um, so we always had them in mind, and they're the only two people that drive in the movie, and neither of them can drive in real life. <laughs> and from the start, like in 2014, Maeve is a friend of ours, and she was like, yeah, I'll learn to drive if this ever happens. I'll learn to drive if this ever happens. But like, she never did. And then she kind of didn't believe that it would ever happen, I think. And then it, suddenly it was happening. So anyway, uh, that was like the hardest, we were like, speaking about all the effects and everything, but like that was the hardest thing, was like every, every time the car parks is a, a visual effect shot, because we had to have a, uh, a stunt driver drive in the car, or like a, a, a double drive the car in, park the car, and like cut the camera, put Maeve into the car, get her to stand out of the car, walk into the house, and there'd be like two shots we'd have to match together just to do a fucking parking job. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's just like the easy bit. But so you can imagine when we came to do that whole scene where it's like the Virgin going down the road being followed really slowly by two cars. Like when we wrote that, we were like, that's pretty easy, you know, we just have to do them driving slowly behind whatever way we're pulling her along the road. But because uh, none of them could drive, Claudia couldn't drive either, and we couldn't get insurance for them to even drive really slowly. We had to build this massive rig and it took two nights to shoot that. So it was basically, it was basically like this truck that pulled the Virgin and all the time the Virgin was floating we came up with this kind of inge ingenious rig. So it's like a, uh, a bicycle seat that she's sitting on. So the, the, she's sitting on a high bicycle seat basically and being pulled along so there's no wires above her. And then that was being clipped onto the front of the first car, and that was like hooked onto the next car, and then this truck was pulling them all along. <laughs> <laughs> and then in post, we had to rub out all the like wire, all the kind of things, that were hooking all the cars together, and it was like something like 30 days rubbing out of rig <laughs> for the post house, as well as, as well as two days shooting for fucking such a stupid job. There you go, <laughs> the magic of cinema. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to wrap it up shortly, but I just wanted to ask. Um, uh, what if you're coming up next? Is there anything you can talk about? Anything that, that... Yeah, there, well, we'd love to do something else with this at some point. Uh, one thing that we've been talking about is maybe like seeing what it would be like is to do a little show because it's so or a TV show because it's so episodic that it might be fun to visit those characters or the dad's world a bit more. Like there's um, people seem to be really into it, and it's kind of one of those things we'd love to go back and do at some point. But uh, we're also uh, at the moment writing a movie for Ardman Animation for the Wallace and Gromit guys, uh, set like in Ireland, like a kids' movie, animated movie. So they're the two things that we're at at the moment. Brilliant. Well, we'll look out for, for thank those. You. Thanks and, uh, for coming. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh,